Hey everybody, welcome back to Star Wars information breakdowns, things of that nature. I've done like three, maybe four. This might be the fourth week of doing breakdowns or analysis on Star Wars, specifically with filmmaking or composition. We've looked at a variety of things from Cad Bane to Ahsoka versus Magistrate fight, and I'm really enjoying it. I'm actually having a lot of fun learning about the intricacies of the filmmaking in Star Wars. And this week, I'm actually going to play a little bit of a game. We got Wyatt. He's on a microphone. Yes, I'm here. Yes, we don't have a camera for him, but you'll hear him throughout this video because he's going to represent the audience in this video. You all, not exactly. You might guess different than him, but it's going to be fun. We've done this one time before, and what I've done is I've created a series of clips from the Star Wars universe. I ask a question about the visual effects of creating that scene, and then we give the answer. So as we go along... I want you to guess in the comments. I want you to post your answer once the video is done so that I can see what kind of guesses you made along the way. And no right? going back and changing them once no, you have the right answer. That's cheating. Ge right? Yeah, we're we're on uh, gentlemen's agreement right. or gentle ladies agreement. All right. Gen gentle folks. Gentle folks agreement. We're going to virtually shake hands. No cheating. All right. So let's go ahead and get into the first one. This goes all the way back to The Empire Strikes Back. Are you ready? Yes. Here we go. Pay close attention. What an iconic scene. Alright, so our options for the visual effects in here is, was this the wall that they're surrounded by? Is this a green screen? Is this a built set or, or or is this early projector tech similar to what we've seen with the wall volume but more just old style projectors because we know that we know that in some way that we uh, George Lucas was thinking about this a long time ago. So did he incorporate it here? Was he actually utilizing it in some way or was this green screen or a built set? What do you think, Wyatt? Now, I've seen pictures of this before. Okay. Um, and I think this is a built set. Okay. I think the background is a matte painting. Okay. Uh, and I think Luke's little thing is over top of a couple mats and stuff. Okay. So I'm going to go with built set, but also, you know, I originally thought it was a mix between set and blue screen. Mm-hmm. Um, so not green screen, but blue, but I'm going to go with built set. All right, let's, uh, let's skip. Let's see. Let's, let's get the answer. Hey, Aha. it's a built set. I did want to throw in a caveat why it is right. The floor, I believe that shows all the way down into the, uh, the big tunnel that they couldn't build that. Yeah. Um, however, that's probably blue screen. Because I feel like I've seen a picture of it from above, and yes. all of that down there was like blue. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but they also had that with the other one we did for Harry Potter. They yeah. had that for that winding staircase in Hogwarts. Very cool. Um, so yeah, the, the surrounding wall is a built set. Very good. One out of how many we have? I think six or seven. Okay. All right. Let's go to the next one. We're doing really good. So far, great. Is that is that Wedge? I think that is Wedge. No, that's not Wedge. Wedge. Oh, that's Luke. No, oh, yeah, that's Wedge. Wedge Antilles. 
maybe. Good shot. <laughs> People are going to roast me in the comments. You don't know, you don't recognize Wedge Antilles, <laughs> the greatest pilot in the entire galaxy. Yeah, I think that's Wedge. Survived every Star War. <gasps> and fall. Bah. <laughs> All right, so we're we're paying attention to the snow walker. What? Hey, go ahead, go ahead. What are you laughing at? Go ahead. I can't hear you very well with these. Okay, you just keep going on. Keep, <laughs> give, You're doing improv. Give in your spiel. All right. So the the walker, the snow weapon walker, is it a miniature stop motion? Is it a human sized puppet, or is it early animation? Oh, you want me to answer right now? I was given the I was given the audience at like a moment to pause the video, <laughs> go into the comments, and write down. All right, I, I think about it. I think everybody knows the answer to this question. Maybe everybody's seen the behind the scenes for this scene in particular. You might be surprised. What's the answer? It's miniature stop motion. All right, let's see if that's the correct answer. Hey, in, in fact. <laughs> if I can ask you yes. to go back, can, okay. we, can we look at that very last where the AT, uh, AT falls? Yes, you can see the snow look kind of like Play-Doh. Watch this. Watch look at the snow at the feet right there. No, I'm, I'm saying the next part. Oh, maybe that's not this. So there's one of them where it falls and you can actually see a latch on one of the foot. Oh, when really? When the feet break loose. Oh, heck There's yeah. a latch that breaks loose and then it falls forward. Very cool. Yeah, I don't know if it's that one or not. I so yeah, this was, a, uh, this was an actual miniature. Yeah. Um, done with stop motion. So if uh, you might know this, I would beg to differ. A lot of people might not know this. I mean, yeah. Star Wars geeks would know it, but maybe not. So let's go ahead and keep moving on. These, are, these might get a little more tough for you. Okay. All right. Let's go to the next one. Oh, I don't know much about these ones. This iconic moment, J.J. Abrams films were like, maybe these would be good. Yeah. <laughs> this scene in particular is really beautiful. Absolutely. Uh, and then they kind of just throw it away for a crappy joke in the second movie. <laughs> this epic scene, she holds out the lightsaber, all of it. Yeah. Oh, the lightsaber. Beautiful. You paying close attention, Wyatt? Mm-hmm. Starting to think I might have should have shortened these a little. <laughs> it's all right if you feel the need to skip through them. All right, so we're going to be focusing on the physical set that was being used to walk on for the scene. All right, mm -hmm. is this a real location? Okay. Is this a built set with blue screen around them? So like the ocean, the sky, or is this a real, is this kind of like a real location with blue screen? So you have a built set that's utilizing blue screen in a studio. You have a real location utilizing blue screen for extras, or is this just an all raw scene? This is tough actually. Yes. Um, because I feel like I've seen set photos of the location, mm -hmm. like a physical location, mm -hmm. um, but I'm I don't remember blue screen stuff. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go with real location. Real hey, location. 
All right, you're going with A. Yeah. Everybody leave your comments, which one you think is correct, and let's get the answer. A. <laughs> Real location, everybody. Wow. Why it's got three. Am I three for three? Three for three. Okay. Well, three for three, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that one was close. It's, the lighting is really dynamic. Yes. And I actually cut out a scene that gave it away. Okay. So there was this beautiful drone helicopter camera shot that sweeps around them quickly. And I know, I was like, oh, that's obviously. That might be what I was remembering. Yeah, because it shows this really wide thing yeah. of circu circling this mountaintop that they're on. And it's really beautiful and dynamic, but it came right after that. So I cut it to try to but stump of, you. But of course, you know, with modern technology and a drone shot like that, we know. You could do it. ILM is kind of known for their ability to like generate those little miniature type stuff mm -hmm. so they could probably just put a fake luke and a fake ray but the Absolutely. lighting and the lighting would probably look good and it probably would look real yeah um but doing it all real is mm -hmm. i think better I so think that was better. close but you got it right awesome <laughs> all right let's go to the next one A little prequel action. A little bit of Darth Maul. All right. So the bike that Maul sits atop. Is there a built bike prop? Same looking as what we see on screen. Maybe minus the things that needs to hold it up, mm. right? Is it a blue screen or BS bike? <laughs> or is there no bike at all for the actor to sit on? So I feel like there can't be no bike at all. Okay. Because the actor needs reference mm -hmm. at the very least. And the uh, art designers would need reference mm -hmm. if there was no bike at all. So you're eliminating C. I'm eliminating C. Okay. That leaves the BS bike and the built bike. <laughs> BS bike. Um, so an actual bike that's built to look like what we see, or is it just like a blue, blue Based off bike? of nothing except my intuition of what I saw, and I don't know how many hours of watching Quarter Cruise VFX <laughs> visual breakdowns. Okay. I'm going to say that this is a built bike prop. A built bike prop. Yeah. Everybody got your answer? Let's check it out. Oh! oh. <laughs> it's a blue screen bike. They did really good. Also notice, no reference for his handles. No. None. Wow. Just okay. sit on top of this blue half shape. Okay, so when he walks to the bike, it's a short sequence, but I was looking at the bike and mm -hmm. I was also looking at the robot because I didn't know which one you were going to ask me exactly. about. And I was like, the bike looks real. Yep. And then he's sitting on it and I'm looking at it in front of him and I'm like, that could be fake. <laughs> and so it was really a toss up. Here. Yeah. Yeah. So. so blue screen bike, you missed one, my brother. I did. I, did. I wonder if uh, anybody else has missed any at this point. Well. Don't, don't cheat, remember. Don't cheat, yeah. We'll see, I think, we'll see down in the comments. All right. I think we got two more. Okay. All right. We'll get through these pretty quick. Yeah. Well, the last one, there's a video answer that's beautiful oh. that I want to end the video okay. with. All so right. um, it has to do with Book of Boba Fett. Okay. I'll just give you that. So um, this is not that one, but let's watch it. Pay close attention.
All right. So a lot of times directors will do something on set that they want to change later for a specific reason. The iconic bikini scene with mm. Carrie Fisher, she has a drape that flows down to the ground. It's purple in the film. It's this orangish, uh, reddish purple, mostly purple. Was this sash, this drape, originally blue and made purple after through visual effects? Was it red and given a purple hue in visual effects, or was it just purple? Hmm. I feel like my knowledge of uh, what what the sash looks like when they're outside in the sun. Mm -hmm. I remember it more reddish. Mm -hmm. From behind the scenes photos and no, such? No, from the movie. Well, that's what I'm saying. They, they might have changed the actual color of it. Yeah. Because a lot of times with color correction, you can just isolate and fix. So did they do that with her sash or did they do nothing? This could be a trick question. <laughs> ah. This is a deep cut, everybody. Yeah, this is tough. Um, I honestly, I have no idea, so I'm okay. kind of guessing here. Okay, give it a guess. I'm going to say red made purple. Okay. Everybody got your comments guessing? Here we go. Behind the scenes picture. Nope. Oh, it's purple. It's just purple. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you tricky son of a gun. Of course, it's just purple. It's just purple. I just had to throw in that classic bikini yeah. scene for this video. Maybe I'll make it the thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Uh -huh. Dang. All right. Yeah, so uh, stumped you again. Stump me again. So Thanks. that's four, four to two? Yeah. If I were a real Star Wars fan, I would know about the bikini. You would, I would know, know about the bikini. Come on. I would actually know. That was the most scandalous the show ever got. <laughs> <laughs> All right, look. So I think this is the last one. Okay. So let's, uh, and it's really cool. So let's, let's, let's watch this scene. Oh. Uh -huh. Cold blood. All right. So as we know from Mandalorian and the Book of Boba Fett, the volume was used for most of everything. Mm -hmm. um, for this, these scenes that are filmed inside of Jabba's room. Job of the Hutt's um, palace area, you know, throne room, I guess is the correct term. Did they use the regular standard volume LED wall for the background and such with just like props, I guess? Or did they do a mix of, well, a built set, so a completely built set for that? Or did they do a mix of both, so some walls and props are there, which it's kind of obvious they have like the chair and everything, but like the pillars, maybe that could have been real. Um, and then they're just like the back walls are LED. What do you think? So I'm going to go ahead and right off the bat eliminate uh, the volume LED wall okay. of all for all of it because clearly Boba Fett and Fennec Shan walk down the steps. Mm -hmm. So they're there in something. So okay. there is a set. Uh, now, whether there is like a background LED wall, mm -hmm. I can't say for certain. So again, this is kind of a, a toss up. 
a coin flip. <laughs> a coin flip, if you might say. <laughs> so you're you're between a completely built yeah. set or a partially built with LED support. Yeah. The volume support. And I think and 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 here's the thing about the LED wall is that it is super deceiving because yep. all the light is correct. Yes. The light deceiving. the light coming off the wall, everything on their faces, so it's harder to tell you know what's going on yeah so it's easy to be like yeah that's a you know real wall Mm -hmm. but i'm gonna put my faith and 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 my heart into the fact that they built this set for java's throne room okay i'm gonna say there's no led wall here and this is a legit set all right I'm going to give you the answer because you don't have headphones on, so you okay. can't hear this video. But write in your comments what your guess is. Post it right now, all of them. Post it right now. And here's the answer for this last one. It is a completely built set. Woo! <laughs> now, I want to I want to finish by watching this video behind the scenes with Dave Filoni and John Favreau and the creators talking about how they needed to build it. Okay. Um, and it's really good. I just want to end with this clip. <laughs> Jabba's Palace, we were desperate to put that on the volume. The challenge with Jabba's Palace is we simply couldn't find a good scene for where we could go from practical to the digital walls. It had to match exactly from the blueprints of the original movie, the Return of the Jedi. When we do recreate things like Jabba's Palace, we show it the proper respect, and not just the respect for making it look like the place, like when we did the cantina, but for the people that worked on it, for the people that were a part of the legacy of Lucasfilm that are the reason we have jobs. Living up to that expectation and living up to that creativity. and there's that weird mobile hanging down the stairs where Carrie Fisher hits her head when she's the bat. Like all the thing, every detail is exact because everybody has a personal relationship with every frame of those movies. And you walk on a set and of course that thing's there. Everything, that's exactly the same. That's beautiful. I love the respect that they've given to the Star Wars story by actually taking time to build Jabba's throne room the way that they did to match it perfectly with the original version when they first were creating the idea back when George Lucas was obviously directing it or producing the story. So um, thank you so much for watching. I hope that this was fun. Leave a comment below and let me know if you want to see more content like this. I, I do all kinds of content about Star Wars and other franchises, other films, other shows, and dive into the filmmaking of them because I believe that if you know what to look for in shows and movies that these professionals, these masterful creators put out, and you know how to analyze them correctly, then you can actually learn the tips and tricks and process for production and apply it to your own films tomorrow. So thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing to the channel and liking this video. That would mean a whole lot. Love you guys. Watch another video if you want to um, that I've done on Star Wars. But right now, Wyatt's going to come back and he's going to talk about Darth Maul versus Obi-Wan Kenobi from the Rebels show and do an analysis for character and story from that scene. So stick around. Wyatt's up next. <laughs>